أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والحمد لله الذي جعلنا من المتمسكين بولاية أمير المؤمنين ولئمة المعصومين عليهم السلام والحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله والحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحسي نعماءه العادون ولا يؤدي حقه المجتهدون الذي لا يدركه بعد الهمم ولا يناله غوص الفطن الذي ليس لصفته حد محدود ولا نعت موجود ولا وقت معدود ولا جل ممدود فطر الخلائق بقدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته ووتد بالصخور ميدان أرضه ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين حبيب الله العالمين بالقاسم مصطفى محمد محمد وعلى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من يوم عداوتهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الحكيم وهو أصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولله الأسماء الحسنى فادعوه بها آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صلي على محمد وعلى محمد أما بعد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته. I begin in the name of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. There is no doubt that is due to His kindness and generosity. He has provided for us opportunities such as these, where we gather together in remembrance of Him, Tabaraka wa Taala. We then begin the way the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi afdalu salatu wa salam Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad <coughs> We'll begin so many of his sermons by saying Usikum wa nafsi bi taqwa Allah al-Azim I advise myself and I advise you to be God conscious, pious, God fearing human beings as this is the only way to success we continue with the most beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the name that we have reached to today is Al-Qasim 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 literally means the one who divides or the one who distributes so it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is dividing something and then after he has divided that he distributes it amongst his creation but when we look at it in depth, we will find that it has that meaning, but it also has a much greater and deeper meaning. But if you want to know a quick definition of what Al-Qasim means, it is the divider or the distributor. The first understanding that we can get from this name is of Al-Qasim is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who swears or is allowed to swear by the makhlukat, by the creation. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yuqsimu bi makhluqatihi yeah. He swears, he takes an oath by that which he has created We find numerous examples in the Quran For example, God says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Wa shamsi wa duhaha Wa al-qamari idha talaha Wa al-nahari idha jallaha Wa al-layli idha yagshaha This wow is known as Wa'u al-Qasam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by His creation we also find it Wattini Wazzaytun for example right so all of these Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by His creation 
because to show us the greatness of that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. Ponder over it, God is saying. Ponder over the sun, ponder over the moon, ponder over the day and the night, how they pull away from one another and how they envelop one another. These are all great signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another example is of why he is known as Qasim is that he distributes and dispenses the material sustenance. What we mean by that is he dispenses and distributes, for example, um, oxygen, for example, air, for example, water, rizq, health. All of these things, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the one who distributes them. He says in surah number 43, verse number 32. He says that it is they who disp- is it they who dispense the mercy of your Lord? And he's talking about people who take partners to God, who rely on other people besides God. God's asking the question, is it, is it they who dispense my mercy or is it me who dispenses the mercy upon my creation? Yeah? Is it me who gives out the ma'ishatahum? We who have dispensed, it is we who have dispensed among them their livelihood in the present life and raised some of them above in rank, above others in rank. Now naturally, we have talked about this many times, but it's always important to remember that God works in a cause and effect system. right? So it's not that He Himself is coming down with risk and giving it to me. He has people who carry out these affairs. He has (coughs) angels who carry out these affairs. And this is why we come to a very beautiful hadith from our 8th Imam, Imam al-Ridha alayhi (coughs) salam. أَنَّهُ قَالْ فِي قَوْلِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى فَالْمُقَسِّمَاتِ أَمْرًا yeah, there's a verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which says, Fal muqassimati amra, those who um, divide and distribute his affairs. Yeah, so he says about that verse, he says it is referring to angels. Yeah, it is referring to angels who are the ones who distribute that. Qal al malaikatu tuqassimu arzaq bani adam ma bayna tulu il fajri ila tulu il shams. فَمَنْ يَنَامُوا فِي مَا بَيْنَهُمَا يَنَامُوا عَنْ رِزْقِهِ Subhanallah. He says that it is the angels who are those who distribute the wealth of God. And they distribute it from dawn until sunrise. This is when all of our rizq is distributed. And he says one who sleeps during that time sleeps on his rizq. Yeah? So hence this is one of those times as we know is recommended that we stay up in worship to God because it is the time when our rizq is handed to us. The third reason why God is known as Al-Qasim is because He distributes immaterial sustenance. We were here talking about material sustenance like food, drink, oxygen. Allah as well distributes immaterial sustenance. Immaterial sustenance is like what? Prophethood. Imamat, the different ranks in Ubudiya, all of these are handed out by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even our akhlaq and the level of akhlaq that we will reach is given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we come to a very lovely hadith from As-Sadiq alayhi salam, annahu qal. إن الله تبارك وتعالى قسم بينكم أخلاقكم كما قسم بينكم أرزاقكم. He says it is Allah who divides and distributes your akhlaq the way He distributes your rizq, your sustenance. Yeah? So He has given people the ability to reach higher levels of akhlaq depending on your own capabilities. Yeah? So if God has created one who is very strong and uh, his intellect is very strong compared to one whose intellect is not that strong, what God wants from both of them is different things, isn't it? God can't expect from the weak to have the same as that which the strong has. God is not unjust like that. Hence he distributes akhlaq meaning the capacity or the capabilities of reaching makarim al-akhlaq is distributed between human beings though in different shapes and forms. If you get that, good for you. Otherwise visit the uh, theology classes where we discuss the adalat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here the Imam alayhi salam says that he Allah gives 
this akhlaq, the way he gives risk to people. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُعْتِ الدُّنْيَا مَنْ يُحِبُّ وَيُبْغِذْ وَلَا يُعْتِ دِينَهُ إِلَّا مَنْ يُحِبُّ yeah? It's very beautiful. He says that God will give dunya to those he loves and those he does not love. But he will only give dunya religion to those that he loves. Hence we should be honored that we are on this path where we have get, captured the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in turn it is a sign of the love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has of us insha'Allah. The last reason we will discuss and when we look at the books of, of this name there are about seven or eight reasons as to why he is known as Al-Qasim. Another reason why he is known as Al-Qasim is because it is he who is the divider on the day of judgment of who will enter heaven and who will enter hell. Yeah? He is going to be him who splits and divides the creation. Those who are worthy of heaven will go to heaven. Those who are deserving of hell will go to hell. But again, we come to this entire point of sabab wal musabab that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works on a cause and effect system. Yeah? It is not He who will sit there and say, you go to heaven, you go to hell. He will have people who will carry out these affairs. And the greatest creation that He has who will carry out these affairs are Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And this is why when we look at some of the titles of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, it gives this hint of them being the ones who decide or will split who goes into heaven and who goes into hell. A Jewish man one came, once came to Rasulullah, peace and blessings be upon him and his family. And he had, yeah. So he asks him about his titles. He says, why are you known as Ahmad? Why are you known as Muhammad? Why are you known as this? And then he asks him, why are you known as Abu Al-Qasim? Yeah? As you know, this is the same name. God is Al-Qasim, a prophet is known as Abu Al-Qasim. Now there are many reasons why he is known as Abu Al-Qasim. One reason is because he had a son named Qasim. So he's a father of Qasim. But the next reason the prophet himself gives, and he says, وَأَمَّا أَبُوا الْقَاسِمْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ يَقْسِمُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ قِسْمَةَ النَّارِ فَمَنْ كَفَرَ بِي مِنَ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَالْآخِرِينَ فَفِي النَّارِ yeah? He says it is God who has divided and set this criterion of who will enter heaven and hell. So whoever denies me, yeah, it is because of this denial that they will enter the hellfire. And whoever accepts me, it is because of this acceptance that they will enter heaven. And this is why he says, I am known as Abu Qasim. The one who will split those who will go into heaven and those who will go into hell. And this is why as well, uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam Salli al Muhammad wa ali Muhammad is known as Qasim al-Jannatu wa nar yeah, It is he who splits those who will enter Jannah and those who will enter the hellfire. And it's a very lovely tradition. I'll just quote it in English coming from the Prophet. Um, peace and blessings be upon him and his family. He says, on the day of judgment, God will say to me and Ali that you decide who will enter heaven and who will enter love, and who will enter hell based on the love they had for you. So he said, Ali will sit on the border of hell and he will tell as people walk by, he will tell hell, this one's for me and this one's for you. This one's for me and this one's for you. This is why he is known as Qasim ul Jannatu wan Nar. What is our role with this name? The first is to seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only as he is the divider and dispenser of everything that we have in this world. Second is to dispense the risk which God has given us towards his creation. That means we do not be stingy with what God has given us. And third is that when I am writing or distributing my will to be just and fair to all parties. That means I don't do zulm upon anybody and I divide and dispense my will according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained. Anytime we give somebody more, just because we like them, we are uh, hurting or denying the right of somebody else and this is zulm in Islam and we will be taken into account for that. Hence this is our role to realize these names and inshallah we will be the example um, of the love of what Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam and the Prophet are looking for so that we will enter into Jannah inshallah. Wa akhiru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.
اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان العین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم قل هو اللہ احد اللہ الصمد لم یلد ولم یولد ولم یکل له کفوا احد اللہ علی محمد اعوذ باللہ السمیع العلیم من الشیطان العین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والحمد للہ قاسم الجبارین مبیر الظالمین مدرک الحاربین نکال الظالمین سریخ المستصرخین موضع حاجات الطالبین معتمد المؤمنین اللہم صلی علی خاتم النبیین و سید المرسلین محمد اللہم صلی علی محمد و علی محمد و صلی علی سید الوسین امیر المؤمنین علی بن عبی طالب سلام اللہ علیہ وسلم علی محمد و علی محمد و صلی علی صدیقة الطاہرة فاطمة الزہرہ سیدتی نساء العالمین اللہم صلی علیم و علی محمد و صلی علی سبت الرحمہ و امامی الہدا الحسن والحسین سید شباب اہل الجنہ اللہم صلی علی محمد و علی محمد وصلي على علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والحجة القائم المهدي اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد صلاة لا غاية لعددها ولا نهاية لمددها ولا نفاد لأمدها اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات وتابع بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد Before we begin with the second sermon it's a small housekeeping announcement um, that, you know, we are filling in our rows way too late. It is almost after I have said Qad Qamat Salah and I've begun the Salah that people are still trying to fill in gaps. Um, and this should not be happening. I've announced this many times. I feel ashamed announcing it again um, because I don't feel one needs to continuously drive the same message home. Um, but we should at least take some discipline that we should not be sitting very comfortably so that we are taking two people's spot. F fill in from now. Um, the khutbas are part of just salah. Yeah, it is not that we can sit in the back and enjoy ourselves and then come back when we want to. They are part of salah. Hence, sit in lines tight amongst each other so that when we pray, there's no need to fill in these gaps. This is where we need to take a lesson from the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Um, they are disciplined when it comes to their salah and they're not as relaxed as we are. So please, let us not um, fill in gaps at the last moment. Take this opportunity now um, or when the Iqamah is going, don't wait till I say Qad Qamat is Salah to stand up. Stand up and fill in the gaps as much as you can. Um, and then inshallah we will not have this problem and stand shoulder to shoulder. I don't like people announcing every day stand shoulder to shoulder. Um, we've been praying Salatul Jama'ah for 30, 40 years now. We should know that we should be standing uh, shoulder to shoulder and how we should be standing. Um, you know, um, one of the names of God is Khabir. We've talked about this. Khabir means that he is an expert. Yeah? Different than Alim. Alim is knowledgeable. Khabir is expert. And when we had discussed this name a long time ago, one of the roles that we have with this name is to be Khabir ourselves. Is to be experts ourselves. And I believe that we should be experts when it comes to worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? We have worshipped God for 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years now. Yeah? We should know how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not newbies when it comes to this. So let's not act like newbies and let's take the worship to God seriously, inshaAllah. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. 
Salian. Ahmad Wali Muhammad. That was the serious part. Now I'll smile, inshallah. Um, today is the last Friday of the holy month of Ramadan. Um, very sad, very sad. You know, uh, in the dua of Wida of Shahru Ramadan, our fourth Imam, Imam al Sajjad, alayhi salam. Allahumma salli alayhi Muhammad. He says, for the true, sincere believers, they weep at the passing of the month of Ramadan, while for the sinners, they long for it to finish. Yeah? So this is a good measuring stick for yourself. Are you the one who is waiting for it to finish? Or are you the one who is longing for it and are saddened by the fact that it is that has gone so fast? Inshallah, we are amongst the people who are saddened that this month is going. Um, hence, we only have a few days left now to better ourselves, to get what we want out of this month, to become better human beings. Let us take the remaining time seriously, inshallah, and remember each other in our prayers as well. Today is also the day marked by Imam Khomeini alayhi rahma um, as Al Quds Day. Uh, Al Quds Day, as we know, is a day in which he marked that all Muslims should remember in this day the suffering of the Palestinian people. It's very important that we understand the purpose as to why he labeled this day as Al Quds Day. You know, in Islam, there are certain things which God has ordained um, for it to be unifying factors amongst all Muslims, not just Shias or Sunnis, but all Muslims. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set certain things for it to be unifying so that everybody is doing it together. One example of that is the Qibla. Yeah? Whether you are Sunni, Shia, whatever sect you are, you are facing the Qibla one direction. Hence God is showing us the importance of unity. Uh, that we unite in this. And you know when, when the scenes of Saudi Arabia or Mecca appear on TV and when people see millions facing one object and praying towards that, this is um, a very humbling moment for people. We have taken it for granted. But you can imagine one who is not a Muslim looking at two million people facing one direction, doing sajda in unison, going up and down. This is a very... Um, awe-striking moment in them that this is a very strong group of people if they could unite they are a very strong group of people so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed for example the Qibla as a unifying factor and as a quick note to that before the Kaaba was placed as a unifying factor what was the Qibla? Baytul Maqdas wasn't it? Yes um, or Baytul Muqaddas Baytul Maqdas was the home where the Jews used to face towards and pray yeah we have to think about why did God not know that the Jews pray there? So why did he assign that home? God was trying to unite not only Muslims, but was trying to unite Jews and Muslims together. That is why he placed the home or the direction towards Baytul Maqdas. But the Jews could not understand the purpose of why God had chosen their home. They didn't understand that God wanted to unite all of us to show that, look, there is not much difference. Come towards Islam. It is the continuation. But it is because of their haughtiness and arrogance that they began to mock the Prophet and say, well, you claim to have a new scripture, but you don't have a place to pray. You are pointing towards our direction. They missed the entire purpose of what the uniting factor that God had put into place. This is why then God changed the Qibla towards Makkah. Likewise, there are other factors like Salatul Jama'ah is a unifying factor. The Quran is a unifying factor. Reciting Salah in Arabic is a unifying factor. Imagine, we are people, and I'm taking a few minutes extra today because it is an important day. We are people of different colors, different backgrounds, different, relig uh, different um, ethnicities, all reciting Salah in that same language. Yeah? Imagine if people in Indonesia prayed in their language, Malaysia, in Hindi they prayed, in Arabic, in Farsi, everybody prayed differently. There would be no unity in Islam, but God has set it in Arabic. Yeah? Um, and he is unifying all of us. Likewise, taking that principle, Imam Khomeini alayhi rahma, what he tried to do was to unite all the Muslims at a time when people were not uniting. And hence, he set a group of people to be our target, and those were the Palestinians. And at their suffering, he said, today is a day when Muslims throughout the world should unite hmm, and face this 
challenge head on so that together we will be a much stronger and um, a much cohesive group which people will take seriously. So this was the philosophy behind why he has set Al-Quds, showing to us the importance of unity in Islam. We cannot underestimate the value of unity. Um, we are not going to get our Imam coming to us if we are not united. So within among ourselves as well, we have people with this idea and that idea, and you have those who are takfiris and those who are la'natis and those who are this and those who are that. We are not united amongst ourselves. How do we expect our imam to come and guide us? Yeah? We need to be united because this unity is the most important thing that is there in Islam. And, and as we Remember the Palestinians. It is important that we remember the other people who are suffering in this world today as well. We must remember the Pakistanis. We must remember the Bahrainis. We must remember those from Saudi Arabia. We must remember those from Afghanistan, from Burma, from Palestine, everywhere throughout the world in Iraq. You know, a very sad report in Iraq since April. It has been, what, four months, three months. Um, over 3,000 people have been killed since this time. Three months. Yeah, and nobody's even really talking about it because it's old news now. Um, we need to remember all of our brothers and sisters who are suffering. Um, and inshallah, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he hastens the reappearance of our imam so that we can have unity on this earth and that we can have peace and justice on this earth, inshallah. Wa akhiru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-la'een al-rajeem. Bismillah rahman rahim والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر صدق الله العلي العظيم